Prevention Lifeline. If you are in emotional distress or suicidal crisis... We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. On the night of October 27th, 2018, I reached a point where I did not want to live anymore. I tried to hurt myself multiple times. I called the suicide hotline number only to be put on hold for 30 minutes. I was smashing plates, cups, and glasses on the ground of my hotel room. I was under tremendous stress and terribly unhappy with my life. I knew I needed to get help, but I didn't because I am a man and men are not supposed to be weak. My name is Kanal Padade and I'm a 23-year-old Indian man advocating for mental health through TikTok. So I'm not going to go with Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo, but for this one, I'm going to go with Feel This Moment by Pitbull. It goes better with the message I'm trying to convey. I first downloaded TikTok in March of 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. I loved the idea of the app as a form of entertainment. It was a great way to pass time. Initially, I didn't see myself ever creating content on this app. I didn't have the self-confidence to do it. So in October of 2020, I decided that I would create content about motivation, mental health, and self-improvement. I started creating content by filming these dances in public and putting motivational messages on it and also sharing my personal story, my mental health struggles. My goal on TikTok is to provide as much value to as many people as possible through vulnerability, relatability, and empowerment. I've found that it's important to be transparent about my own personal struggles and relatable to my intended audience, which is Gen Z, in order to empower them and inspire them. This chapter of your life starts Monday, May 17th. It's time to close the previous chapter, leaving the past where it belongs. And now, you're gonna start focusing on yourself. And here's what you're gonna do. So first, I don't want that happen. So how do you feel when you see all these comments? It feels really nice reading through all these comments, 1,004 of them. And if you see some of the specific com things people are saying, you inspire me to keep going. I can personally relate to many of your mental health struggles. And thank you for breaking the barriers for the South Asian community. These positive comments make me feel amazing. I actually screenshot all of them and put them into an album on my phone to look back on when I'm having a bad day. Some of the more hateful comments I got were you're just fake depressed, you're not actually helping anybody, and maybe it would just be better if you go and killed yourself. These comments made me feel pretty awful, to be honest. At that time, I was already going through my personal mental health struggles, and to see people on the internet react so negatively and, and comment on my posts that were meant to be positive and motivational, it did not feel good. But I realized that their hatred and negativity towards me is coming from a place of deep hatred and insecurity with themselves. The first day one of my TikToks flew up was on Christmas Day. I was back in Maryland with my mom celebrating Christmas and we had just had dinner. After we finished, I decided to create a TikTok on my life story. I used pictures and videos of myself from 2018 to 2020 to show my progress. immediately threw my phone on my bed and did not look at it for the next two hours. I picked up my phone at 11 p.m. and I remember seeing 150 new followers and 10,000 views on my video. And at that point, I only had 1,500 followers. So this was a huge deal for me. At this point, I was really excited 
but I was also anxious and scared. And it's because I realized that some of my friends from high school and college who didn't know about my story now knew. They were commenting on it. They were reaching out to me and I didn't know how to react. I was embarrassed at first and I contemplated deleting the post, but I didn't because I knew that the goal of my social media was to impact a larger audience. On February 19th, my mentor reached out to me with an opportunity to speak on TV. I would be on the first segment of NBC 10 Philadelphia's new mental health series. It's Kunal Pathade, a young banking professional in Philadelphia. Thank you for being here. Inspired to open up about his own battles with depression. This opportunity made me realize that I could impact millions of people by sharing my story on my personal mental health struggles and empowering Gen Z. Around the time of the news feature, I was not doing the best mentally. I was still processing some trauma and I was dealing with pretty bad depression and anxiety. At this moment, after I got all this support from my friends and family, I realized that no matter how your life looks in public, you can still be struggling with your mental health on the inside. I am now on a self-improvement journey and I'm finding healthier coping mechanisms to deal with my mental health and my physical health. Some examples of self-care practices that I personally implement are meditating throughout the day, keeping a gratitude journal, working out four to five times a week, going on walks, and playing my favorite upbeat songs. As an Indian man, I'm going to continue to share my story of vulnerability, relatability, and empowerment to break the mental health stigma. I'll be honest, I still do struggle with my mental health on a daily basis. But now I realize that my depression, my anxiety, and my ADHD will never fully go away. However, I will find better ways of coping with these feelings as I grow older. My final message to anyone out there struggling is that you are never alone. While your life may not get easier, you will get stronger.